it might curl up on me a little bit, so that's why I. So, um, you see what that does instantly? Is it gives you soft edges. So. See what I'm doing? I'm just dabbing the edges there. So if I want to bring back the white of that ridge, see? I'm just wipe, wipe it out. So you get these soft edged. But now here's the thing about the, the clouds is that um, the shadow of the cloud, it's an extremely light shadow. And that's what you need to know. It's an extremely light shadow. So I'm going to take, that's already got a little red in it. Why waste your mud? And then, so I took red, yellow, and blue. I made myself sort of a gray. Uh, just hit a little bit of shadow on the shadow side. In this case, our light's coming from here. Add yellow. And then that's usually too green. So you want to add some red. So basically, red and green are complementary colors. And they will gray themselves. I see even more orange. So I'm going to add a little bit more red and yellow to the green. You see what that wet edge does? It just naturalizes the color. Right, right over the cloud here. I'm just using the corners of the brush. Look at that. Again, the brush is See how all the little waves, the ripples, are horizontal. And and they're because they're rippling, they'll be the ripples will be closer together far away, like this. There's a little, little fingernail trick there. Um, but up here, you know, the ripples will be further apart. And that'll give you a little perspective. All right. Reflection is very much the same as this, but in reverse. So this thing gets reflected. So it almost makes a full circle here. I just put it in pretty loose. Might even get some over there too. Then, so what happens is that some of this bridge part ripples into the water, okay? And some of the shadow part of the reflection ripples into this. So you get a sort of a zigzaggy edge there. Yeah, like that. And you know, depending on how wavy it is, you can kind of do whatever you want. See, you see how you're more attracted to the hard edges? So. And soften the edges a little bit. A little more impressionistic looking, right? Pull up those things. You know, after you do this after a while, uh, you'll be unconscious. You just be. Ch -ch -ch -ch. You don't even think about it anymore. But as usual, this painting is lacking dark because it's a watercolor. I 
feel like that, you know that one cook, Emeril? That guy, Emeril or Emeril? What does he go, bam or something? <laughs> bam! Make it pop, you know? Smack it! That's my, that's my thing. You're gonna see me on YouTube. He's the smack it guy! I tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run down and patent that phrase. Okay, okay. So the, uh, you see how the uh, perspective is going? I'm way up here looking down on it. So if you're down here, it might be flatter. But this is uh, going up at an angle like that. Like that. I can't see it on this side. So if it is that up there. Boom. So smack it, and then. That'll be the darker part of the shadow. If you look, see that it's darker. Um, here's a cool thing to understand. I'll just paint it, okay? <laughs> this is darker in the water. This is lighter in the water. Yeah. You know, it's so much easier to, to, to see, I can't even talk. <laughs> I'm not a word guy, uh, but um, no, but it is so much easier. So it's a little lighter in the water there. Yeah. Yeah. So I put that in there. Now it looks a little stagnant until you give it some ripplization. And maybe even take out a couple. That probably would have worked better if I would have kept it wetter. So I'm going to come back with a little bit of water in there. Just a little bit of water. I mean, very little. Too much water and it'll drip. See, I put the water on there and I got white. Okay. Now, and then ripple, ripple, ripple. Maybe even a little yellow. And uh, where the moss grows. And You might have to keep reinforcing those a little bit here and there. There's some darkies in the water back there, see them? Because there's a shadow created by the bridge onto the water. See it? <coughs> Barely there. And back, it's over here. Um, it's back over here. I hear the Canada geese. We are in nature. They came back. They got relocated in the spring yeah. when the pond was emptied. Yeah. yeah. Some little sub shadows in there. You got a little sub shadow there. They're fun. You might even want to notice that there's a couple of brick things on there that, you know, it's a very light sort of shadow. So I'm just going to, just for texture, put a couple. I'll come back and ripple. This a little darker. Just keep reinforcing things because it's watercolor, you know, and it's going to dry lighter. So I just come back and reinforce things. The edges. I feel like going over it again. And the light trees gives you that watercolor y feel. You don't have to do this when you say that. <laughs> I don't know what made me do that. What, what green are you away. using? Uh, the, 
you know what I just take some blue whatever and I'll add some yellow to it I'm looking for let's see something like that so you're not really using green you're making it into green well the shadow isn't really green right but I'm kind saying, of a neutral I'm saying this green here oh that's a Prussian blue yellow okay and a little red okay thank you and you know what <clears throat> I'm gonna just um, get a little water going on there first because I don't want I mean I want my uh, my dry brushish that's a word dry brushish uh, shadows to be a little more organic looking see that was a little stiff when I put it on there before so here this is interesting now I'm going to combine two techniques so I have See. Got it awfully red on me. Thought I had it. I'm just making a darker green with the uh, Prussian blue, cad yellow, and here I have a little bit of uh, what's it called? Magenta. Okay, now I'm going to sort of dry brush it. So I want a little bit drier brush. See how I'm getting some dry brush effects? But it's also wet into wet, right? So I'm doing dry brush and wet into wet. To give me a, a, it's all about the edges. I'm just trying to get interesting edges that way. That's all. See, because I like the faded edge, but I also like the, the dry brush edge. Just look how fast that is. It's hilarious. You just let the water do the work. But you tell everybody else, oh yeah, I'm like Rembrandt over here. No, it's the water doing the work for you. I'm not sure. I don't. So now, if I get a stiffer edge like that, what I'll do is I'll wet it. And just see, <laughs> uh, dissipate the edge into the light a little bit. Like here's a pretty stiff edge. I'll just use a little water. Oop, a little more water in that. And use your finger sometimes. And we'll see how that cooks up. Also, you know, oh, probably had some blue in the water too. If I'd have really been thinking ahead, I would have like, Some of that water, the, the blue, yeah. Um, you can ripple that in there too, just rippleization. Maybe a little cloud hint. <laughs> <laughs> you saw how I did it, I just did it. Oh, okay. And you thought I was done, did you? You thought I was done. On a couple of branches so if you want a stiff edge you got to wait for it to dry up a little bit I don't want to cover up all my clouds so I'll keep some of these guys a little bit bare I like my strokes to look sort of calligraphic I mean, yeah, I like. They do. They I do like to like remind the viewer. Painting. Yeah, I like to remind the viewer that it's a painting. <laughs> no, I don't want to look like a camera did it. I used to do that for murals, and it just left me empty all the time. And people always, you know, people always go. Here is when the dry brushing. Let's get them a little greener here. More yellow. 
and uh, Prussian blue makes a better green because it's it's a blue that's on the uh, green side and I want it dark let's try that see look at that the the less water see I'm using hardly any water and I'm getting that dry brush look which I like and I'm not painting leaves, I'm painting clumps, like this. Varying, twisting my brush, moving my brush in different directions so I don't get the same stroke repeating over and over. Eh -eh, you don't want to do that. So I'll bring some things together when they get a little uh, scattered. I'll just bring some things together. I lay it down. See how I'm laying it down using the side of the brush? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I come up and use the tip of the brush. So I'm using all the parts of the brush. You just get used to it after a while. So you, even though these lights look light on these leaves, Look at them up against the sky or up against the clouds. They're dark. It's just that the shadows are really dark, right? They're even darker than anything up there. So I'm putting down, actually, believe it or not, the, uh, the lights or something like that. And these are fun, watch. Oh, so much fun. So here's the thing, I start off with kind of a clumpy mass like that, and then watch, I just edge out the side, see? I like to see some, some stuff coming through. So I put it down kind of messy like this. I don't want to ruin my cloud though. <laughs> it's a, everything's a sacrifice. Everything's a sacrifice. Okay? So I put it down kind of clumpy like that. And then I come back and give myself a couple of nice little edges. Sometimes when I have a dangler out here like this, I might just give them like a, not this perfect little twig, but sort of like a reference to it. Really. So just something like this. Just like that, that's it. Going here. Remember, so here's the rule, okay? You're writing things down. Overlapping creates depth. And yes, I do put in some red leaves because there's stuff dying on there. So you do need some orange. Orange, orangeization. Uh, uh, oh yeah, I was gonna throw a couple right over the bridge. What that does is it connects. See how the bridge almost looks like a barrier in between this part of the painting and that part mm -hmm. of the painting. So this is a connection. I call it a linker. I don't because I don't know what else to call it. I'm sure people have a name for it. Bridge. It's a bridge between the bridge. Excellent. <laughs> a little of that. Sometimes I might even shoot a couple of these up there, but I don't think so in this case. And then I'll look at it from far away. Usually it's things need to be brought together. Okay, cool. Didn't we say that last week? That's... A pig in the mud. I was going to say I came up with that expression, but I... <laughs> See a couple of light guys. <clears throat> yeah. I'll just play with it. I might come back in here and do a couple of things, but I'll. When I sign a painting, I used to usually use the colors that are in the painting, and I usually like to um, put it in an area of a little contrast. But I don't want to make too big of a deal out of it, so I'm just going to do it kind of light. And I like my. I like my signature to look like my painting. Mm -hmm. So when I put in my strokes, it's, it's very much like I do my signature. I want the whole thing to look like a signature. 